Hey everyone, in this video, really excited to talk to you about a type of machine learning problem that you may never have heard of before. So let's kind of backtrack. On this channel and in most introductory machine learning courses or textbooks or stuff on the internet, you typically are solving one of two kinds of machine learning problems. It's usually either a classification or a regression problem. Now, let me just explain what each one is in a sort of formal context so that we can explain how this new one is fundamentally different from those. So for classification, for example, here's an example we used a ton on this channel. Given some student x, so you can think of x as just a feature vector about some high school student. For example, uh, how long they've been in high school, their GPA, grades, stuff like that. We want to learn a function, f of x, which is going to predict the probability that that student will drop out of high school maybe in the next month or year or something. And so we plan to use this predicted probability, which is between 0 and 1, in order to do some kind of decision about that student. If they're very likely to drop out, maybe we send some resources, help them out in some way. So that is the typical classification problem. We also have regression problems, and we've talked a lot about how to solve those. For example, given some movie x, so x is just some kind of feature vector about a movie, like which actors are in it, how much do they spend on the movie, stuff like that. Can we learn a function f of x, which is going to predict the ticket sales, m hat, m just for money, that the movie will make. So this is trying to predict some kind of continuous value instead of some kind of discrete value, and so we call these regression problems. Now, here comes the new class of problems. What I'm going to do first is walk out here and I'm going to describe the setup of this problem, and then I'll talk about it in a more human, understandable way, so we understand exactly what it is we're trying to solve and how it's fundamentally different from these guys. So this class of problem is called ranking problems or learning to rank. So officially given some kind of query queue, I'm choosing to use this nomenclature of queries and documents just because if you do any research in this field or read papers, that's a lot of times what you'll see. But you can think of as a query, just as any kind of search you might put into a search engine, for example. Um, and you can think of documents as the results that are returned by that search engine. So given some kind of query queue and some documents D1 through DK, you want to learn a function f, a function of that query and those documents, which is going to be able to output a score for each document. So it's going to give you S1 hat, S2 hat, all the way to SK hat, such that the higher scoring documents should be ranked higher for that particular query queue. Now that I've basically read what's exactly on the board, let me talk about it in a more human understandable way. Uh, so for example, let's say you're designing the world's first search engine for animal lovers. And let's say someone types in the query cats. So this can be thought of just as a search or a question you might have. So they're going to type in cats and hit the search button. Then as you might expect, we're going to get a populated list of documents or results that are going to match their query. For example, the first one's on local animal shelters, the next one's on caring for your cat, and the last one is about Cats the Musical. Now this function that we learned is going to output a score for each of these guys. For example, let's say the score for this one is 0.9, the score for this one is 0.7, and the last one is 0.3. And that is exactly the score we use to rank the documents for this particular query, because we believe that the scores that are higher align with documents that are more relevant to the query the user typed in. So at, at the heart of this ranking, of this learning to rank problem, is exactly the fact that these scores are what are used to rank the documents in relevance order for the user based on what search they type in. And now I think it's very important to understand how this is fundamentally different from a classification or a regression problem. In a classification problem, we are doing some kind of predicted probability. Um, so you might think this is classification because can't we just predict whether or not some kind of document is relevant for a particular search. That could be a crude way to do it, but you'd be leaving a lot of information on the table because these documents are fundamentally related to each other. We're not considering each one independently because they're all related through the fact that they are possible documents for a given search. If you had a different search like dogs, you would have a different set of documents. So it really is this kind of grouped problem where you have a query and a set of possible documents and they need to interact with each other in a way that a typical classification framework can't really do. You might think this is a regression problem because can't we just use the regression techniques to find these scores? Well, again, that could be a crude way to do it, but again, we're doing the exact same problem where a regression framework doesn't really think about the interactions between observations in the data set, whereas here we do explicitly need to think about those interactions, which one should be ranked higher than the other. 
So for that reason, this is neither a classification or a regression problem. Now that doesn't mean that we can't apply flavors or techniques of stuff we've learned here to these problems. In fact, when we do our video on introductory techniques to deal with these ranking problems, you'll see a lot of the same ideas come up. But I just want to make the point across that it's definitely not the exact same kind of problem, but it is a very important problem to solve. For example, to close this video, let's talk about a few applications. Obvious one is search engines, just like the one we had here. So if you design your own search engine or if you're using a search engine like Google, this may be what's going on behind the scenes. Another big one is email search. So if you go into your emails and you're looking for some email you had a year ago about uh, dogs, for example, and you type in the word dogs, you could use this to populate those list of results in such a way that the email you're probably looking for should be near the top. Or file systems, which is more of a traditional application of these guys. If you have a big file system on your computer or network and you're looking for a file, you might type in some words that may be in the file, and now you have to decide how to rank all the results such that the file the user is looking for probably starts at the top. So tons of applications here. A very, very cool field that I didn't learn about until uh, pretty later on. So I think that if you are interested, definitely follow along. We'll have lots of videos on this general field. So if you like this video, like and subscribe for more just like this, and I'll see you next time.